Okay guys, welcome to another one of my videos. We're going to look at some stuff to do with boxing, specifically to do with what Floyd Mayweather had to say about Mark Brilliant and how people are interpreting that. I think, in all honesty, I don't think you can really miss or mix a message. I think that it works in any way you want to see it. I feel that you can see it as an honorable thing or you can see it as a dishonorable thing only in as much as it sort of taps into what you fundamentally believe in regards to the relationship between Deontay Wilder and Mark Brilliant. I personally feel that uh, there's a certain disingenuity, disingenuity about it. It's disingenuous, but at the same token, you could always see it as being a pure and honorable thing to do. The timing can be seen as... Um, distasteful but could also be seen as tasteful and we'll get into that in a minute now first things first of course i'm not sure whether you guys have ever seen the movie called um triumph of the spirit by william defoe one of my favorite actors okay and uh the guy who supposedly uh inspired the movie about some guy who was boxing in auschwitz the movie called triumph of the spirit you see it here it's right here triumph of the spirit um, was released I think in the late 80s and stuff I never really wanted to watch it because it always got me depressed but I you know it's Willem Dafoe and Willem Dafoe you know he's one of those actors that I can relate to for a variety of reasons nonetheless he supposedly comes from the same town that um, Harry Houdini came from you know what I mean and they and he sort of jokes along with people who also come from that town where Harry Houdini came from that the biggest escape trick that he ever did was escaping from that town that being said salamo arosh was imprisoned at Auschwitz. Auschwitz. he was forced to box against other prisoners the losers of which were sent to the gas chambers or shot he survived over two years and, and 200 fights eventually being released when the camp was closed I'm not sure that the Nazis were that wasteful, considering it was a prison labor camp, that they would just shoot people if you didn't win. But you know, it's still a prison camp anyway, but it is what it is. Now, BT, I put this image out. <laughs> and this is more or less going to be the legacy of the fights between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, because they are going to interpret and control the narrative and the message. And just about every picture that you see is a picture in which Tyson Fury is dominating Deontay Wilder. Okay? You don't see the knockdown, of course. Or do you see the knockdown? Now, you don't see the knockdown where Deontay Wilder knocks down Tyson Fury, but you do see the knockdown of Tyson Fury uh, on Deontay Wilder. And that's the way it's going to be. These are going to be the, the enduring images of the Deontay Wilder legacy alongside something that I've seen here which i'm pretty certain is going to be uncomfortable watch for a lot of you deontay wilder fans but it's been made in a way that sort of reflects how history will look at this 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 situation with deontay wilder specifically and then of course we'll talk about how floyd mill has weighed into the conversation um after what sean porter said and how it's affecting the deontay wilder fans who are very frustrated with the way things are going at the moment being that things didn't necessarily work out the way they expected it but let's have a look at this six million years to die, to die. choose one So, you know, I think that more or less tells you a tale of how things are going to be with Deontay Wilder. But let's go back to the main issue here. Let's talk about um, let's talk about what Floyd had to say. Let me go find that picture. So here we are with Floyd. Floyd puts the image of Mark Brilliant when he was a boxer and later in life when he was supposedly, when he, you know, in retirement, basically. And he's written here. Underneath the image, he's written the following. Floyd Mayweather, please hit and follow. Sorry, please hit the follow button. If you want to follow a humble 
student, a humble student, teacher, mentor, and coach in the sport of boxing. A humble student. You know, he put that first. Don't underestimate Floyd Miller's ability to communicate what he wants to say. Okay? He's put that humble student, a person who's learning. We're still learning. I'm still learning. A teacher. At the same time, he's a teacher, a mentor. He mentors people and coach. Is a humble student first, then a teacher, then a mentor, then a coach in the sport of boxing. So it goes from the personal development thing to sort of being a professional. He encompasses everything in what he wants to say here in the sport of boxing. He has all the credentials and qualifications to support why I recognize him as an elite boxing coach. I don't. This is where I diverge in opinion away from Floyd Mayweather. I don't think he really helped Deontay Wilder. I think Deontay Wilder also didn't help himself. And I think they had a difficult relationship, which if he had any self-respect, he should have left before he got fired. That being the case, we'll talk about something else that I realized. All right. Something that nowadays many unqualified people claim to be. Now, that obviously is a shot at Manik Scott. And I agree with him on that. On that score, I do agree. Now, here's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go onto a page of a person who fundamentally agrees with anything Deontay Wilder does and says and has been quick to sort of latch on to the uh, situation here with, uh, with Deontay Wilder and Floyd Mayweather. And we're talking about the one and only Blue Blood. Let's go to his page for a second. Now, I'm not going to play his video. and I don't want any LDBC acolyte or supporter or dick rider or dick sucker or toe sucker or any other like or any of that ilk or, you know, ball, tugger, uh, you know, peepee hole, tonga. I don't want any of them to take offense. We're just commenting about what's on here. And if you do get offended, it's on you. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's not my fault that in life you couldn't find anything else to get involved in and be passionate about until you come on YouTube. And then suddenly you found something that you can fit in to from afar, knowing that people won't necessarily see what you're really like in real life. So there you go. I have, you know, I, it, 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 I understand that. I understand, you know, you, you, you find that a lot of people who are very uh, toxic yet attract a great deal of people, particularly in boxing, particularly in boxing. You, you, you look at them and you've, you kind of realize that there's, they, they definitely don't get along with a lot of people. From top to bottom, I'm speaking about here. And Dr. Button is speaking about here. But you know what, man? A person who does get along with people in all honesty, is blue blood. But, but, you know, so we're not going to tar everybody with the same brush. We're not going to paint everybody with the same brush or tar them with the same brush. We're going to go to blue blood's page. We're not going to play this video. We're going to look at some of the comments of people who follow blue blood and what they have to say about this particular statement that Floyd Mayweather has put out. Let's go there. So here we are on Bluebird's page, okay, and Bluebird writes the following, uh-oh, Floyd Mayweather takes shot at Deontay Wilder, takes shots at Deontay Wilder, and Malik Scott says, Mark Brilliant, real trainer. Well, to be honest though, if he says he's a real trainer, and you know, he didn't just, he didn't say he's just a real trainer, he says like, you know, he's more than a trainer, to be honest with you. Is that can that automatically be interpreted as taking shots at Malik Scott and Deontay Wilder? But I suppose he, you know, let's keep it real. He did take shots at them. But I told you at the very beginning that you can see it from two angles. You can see it as being pure or impure. My thing is this: that regardless of how Deon, uh, sorry, regardless of how Floyd Mayweather might have felt. He did hold his fire till after the fight. He let Malik Scott do what he was supposed to do. He gave Malik Scott a chance. I'm sure he had his reservations about Malik Scott and what they were doing down there. And I'm going to sort of emphasize that in a bit. I could not understand for the life of me why people were so sold on this Malik Scott stuff. It was the most ridiculous nonsense I've ever seen. It was very unprofessional. 
No, shout out to Kendall. Shout out to Coach K. Shout out to Zone 6. Zone 6 said back then that Deontay needs to stop this ghetto training bullshit that he's on. I don't understand it. The only thing that Malik Scott got Deontay Wilder to do was to uh, recognize that he needed to recover better. And they felt that was enough. The nutrition program was horrific. He should have advised them against lifting weights the way he was lifting. They got a, you should have got real and true professionals in. He had the money to do it. We're talking about Floyd Mayweather here. Floyd spared no expense in preparing for a fight. You know what I mean? He spared no expense. He will pay Alex Arisa just to stand around him, just to create the impression of now working for him as opposed to Manny Pacquiao. But you know, Deontay Wilder wanted to go on to some island in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, put his own little ring up with his own little sycophants. Nobody telling him, like, maybe you're doing this wrong, maybe you're doing that wrong. I said Malik Scott. Malik Scott, bruh. We'll go, we'll go into that later. But here's the thing. I'm saying that Floyd held his fire, if you call it shots, until after the fight. And he decided to express how he really felt. Now, let's keep it real. The Mark Brilliant situation is not going to go away. Because he didn't just fire the guy. He destroyed the guy's reputation. I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's... The reason why I've got this gentleman up is not to play his video, it's to look at the comments as usual. Now what I'm going to do, obviously, uh, I've had this up for a while, so I'm guessing he has more. Let's keep it current in as much as this video is concerned. Refresh the page and see whether there's more comments. So that's what we're going to do. So now you can see he's got 3,566 views. So that's current in as much as this video is concerned. You got 254 likes, 14 dislikes i never dislike anybody's video i've never disliked anybody's video on youtube except one belonging to uh what's his name again something risen Pro, what was his name again the one that said that uh that trayvon martin deserved to die he said that Tray that was years ago he said trayvon martin deserved to die that's the only video i've ever found down in my entire life on youtube Never thumbed down a video, never reported a video. Ah, actually, I have reported one with a white guy. That was with, uh, what's his name? Um, what was his name again? Stuart Little, when he put my face up. Uh, that, was, that was about it years ago, years ago. Stuart Little. Stuart Little and Price, what was this? Something Risen? I can't remember his name. But anyway, he said that, he said that, um, Trevor Martin deserved to die and uh, Stuart Little I was beefing with him and he was trying to be funny so I just thought fuck it and you know what I noticed back then okay is that people would report my videos and you know you, people are taking my videos down they're taking my channel down copious amount of times copious amount of times you know what I'm saying yeah, especially white people that's why white people don't play fair they'll come and troll you and stuff like that but the moment you say something and they feel like they've got you in they've sort of drag you into that web where you say something raised they go report you and get your channel taken down so uh that's that's why i don't necessarily i'll, I'll block people i'll block anybody who comes on my channel if i need, if i feel the need and people you notice that they come on your channel and write something just because they want other people to come to their channel you know what i'm saying and see what they're saying about you so you know especially block them and sort of start them of oxygen immediately so I can I can dig that, but that being that being the case, okay, uh, we're not here to uh, bash. We're not here to bash Blue Blood here. Blue Blood, let's I face it, it's a successful channel. It is a successful channel. So you know what I'm saying. I don't agree with anything. You know what I'm saying. Let's read what he's written here. It says, "Retired legend, Hall of Fame boxer Floyd Mayweather takes the opportunity to uplift another boxing legend, Mark Breland, at the same time." poking at Olympic bros, bronze medalist, former WBC, American heavyweight, uh, uh, world champion, superstar boxer. <laughs> he likes writing that superstar boxer. 
<laughs> he lo- <laughs> he likes writing that or saying that I should say superstar boxer Deontay. You should say Deontay, the Bronze Bomber Wilder, to give him you know his full name, and his new trainer, former heavyweight star, star, title contender, turned trainer Malik Scott. Here's what Mayweather had to say. All right, so we're not going to watch the video. That was fun. Let's go to the comment section. That's more or less what I want to see. Let's go see what's up there. So at the moment that this video is being made, it's been sorted by top comments. What I'm going to do actually is put the newest comments. I don't really like this top comment thing because a lot of them are sort of generic and uninteresting. So I'm just going to go by newest comments. So I'm going to change that to newest comments. Give me a minute. Give me a second, I should say. Okay, so here we have the top comments at the moment. 24 minutes ago, it says Floyd failed to train Woodley to beat Paul. Now he thinks he he have trained Wilder to beat the best trainer in the world. That's not necessarily what he said, though. That's not what he said. He said he respects Mark Brilliant and he supports Mark Brilliant as an elite trainer. He didn't say, you know, f- you know, people want to make it about Floyd and Deontay because he kind of elevates Deontay Wilder's status. Let's keep it real to suggest that Floyd has some deep envy, jealousy, and animosity towards Wilder. He might have some animosity towards Wilder. I think he doesn't like the guy, and Wilder doesn't like him either. So let's keep it real. You know what I mean? It's not one-way traffic here. Wilder doesn't like a lot of people. Wilder is what, how did uh, Nez from the boxing voice, uh, boxing voice put it? He's a very polarizing figure. I'll put it more than that. I think he's a very nasty, egotistical, disgusting, pretentious, unsure, insecure person. Because if you have a character that changes from what he used to be to what he is now, based upon influences, outside influences on YouTube, and you become one of the most toxic people that I've ever seen in my life, and an absolute and total fraud who refused to take this thing seriously. Then I know that you're no good. That means you're weak. Your weakness, you tried to cloak it in strength. But what you really were was mentally weak. And I think Floyd is a hundred times. A hundred times mentally stronger than Deontay Wilder. Regardless of whether you like the image or not. It is what it is. Floyd stood on what he believed in. Regardless whether it was Gucci, whether it was uh, the guy who owned the Clippers, he said things that were unpopular, yet at the end of the day, when you looked at his lifestyle, there's no denying that it was black American to the core. The barbecues, the line dancing, the camp, the doghouse fighting, everything about it was pure black and black American. Okay, he changed the concept. He brought almost like the prototype concept of hip hop culture into boxing. Prior to that, you might have had Roy Jones, but that wasn't deep enough. It was Floyd who really brought that hip hop culture and influenced people like Broner to go crazy. And they still haven't been able to do it right. You know what I'm saying? Now, trying to say that he's some kind of oh, he's attacking another black man. You see, I, I read some comments here saying he, oh, Floyd, oh, we're we always talking about, isn't Matt Brillen the black man? I mean, let's forget about Anthony Joshua and him. Uh, isn't Matt Brillen the black man? Let's read some comments. Straight up, Wilder would be Floyd's Frankenstein if they would collaborate. I don't know what that means. Okay, moving down. This one says, It will never matter who trains Wilder because he's not really going to implement his training into his fights for more than a round or two before he vacates the training and resorts back to his own way of fighting. All right. This one says, as much as I don't care for Floyd personally, personally, I I thought he was going to say personality, personally, he's right. The reality is that Malik Scott don't really have a legendary resume. So why not get trained by somebody that never lost? And well, he wasn't even asking to train him to keep it real with you. It was just the disrespect to the trainers out there. Listen, I'm going to show you something. And this isn't something that I've, this isn't a Jamie Khan lately thing for me. This is what I knew about Malik Scott. Malik Scott is a joke. 
And we're going to go back two years just so I can prove it to you. All right? Because I've been watching Malik Scott for ages, for years. I'm going to lie. I ain't going to front. I came across Malik Scott through Ellie Setback when he was still boxing. When he was still boxing. I've watched Malik Scott do, um, what do you call it? Cross training around his gym. From tire to this, to that, to that, to that, to that. Until he decided to put on this bulk and became ridiculous. You know? Let's look. It says, fast forward the 10 minutes of statistics and titles, then get to the point. Okay, I don't know what he's, you know, <laughs> he's probably criticizing the video there. What's this one say? Floyd Mayweather statements has proven. Why Wilder said the things he said about trusting him. All of Mark Brilliant's fine accolades aside, the bottom line is that Brilliant failed to protect his fighter from drugged water. And that's what we're going to get to. Fail to protect his fighter from drugged water. It's got nothing to do, that has nothing to do with JD's, right? All right. Uh, this one says, he should have swallowed his pride and let the man train him. He didn't, I didn't think Floyd wanted to train him really. He just said it just to sort of placate and just to uh, make the, uh, allow the Deontay Wilder fanatics to feel better. I don't think he had any interest whatsoever of training a guy like Deontay Wilder because Deontay Wilder don't listen. Floyd is hating on Wilder. If Mark is, a gra is great, as he's saying, then why is he not employing him? It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to employ him to actually respect him, does he? You know what I'm saying? And you can see why Floyd and 50 was that close. And you can see why Floyd and 50 was that close. I don't know. All right. Okay. Mayweather couldn't beat Logan Paul. LOL. Okay. Say what you all want. Wilder could have used some defense. <laughs> Do you know what though? Was it about defense really? Was it about defense? I don't, you know, people talk about that. You know, because Wilder did kind of like act like he had some defense all of a sudden. But, you know, we're not going to fuck with that. All right. So let's see. Let's, let's find some, some of the more juicier stuff that I saw earlier. I saw some juicy stuff earlier. What's this one say? Vegan skills. Vegan skills. Jesus. That's a name. If there's one group of people I can't stand, it's vegans. I don't like them at all. I pray, you know, I've got children. I pray that they don't suddenly get indoctrinated into veganism. The most destructive form of nutrition you have on the planet. Anyway, Floyd is embarrassed that our American heavyweight champion keeps getting beat by the Brit. Floyd is embarrassed that our American heavyweight champion keeps getting beat by the Brit. Despite not particularly liking Wilder, Floyd is pro-America. Without a shadow of a doubt. I love Floyd. I ain't gonna lie to you. You can call me whatever you want to call me. I see Floyd. F Floyd for me is warts and all. Floyd as a motherfucker, but fucking brilliant. Floyd is Floyd as a motherfucker. But fucking brilliant. Let me actually put a, f uh, a video that Floyd put up recently. Let's, let's, let's have a look at that. Let's look at a video that Floyd put up recently. So this is Floyd in New York in some Vilderbilt Museum, Science Museum or some shit like that. Let's have a look. You know, why everybody's fucking hating and angry and frustrated. He's like a kid in a toy shop. Look at the smile, he's just happy. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna to touch upon that later with some images that he put up, okay? You know, Floyd is pro America. All right, that's where we at. Okay. Let's look at some of the more controversial stuff that I read earlier. Here's stuff. It says, uh, Wilder is hands off even when it comes down to Floyd Mayweather Jr. He can miss me as a fan and a supporter if he says anything negative about the Bronze Bomber. I'm too Wilder for life. Good for you. Good for you. You know what I mean? Got nothing against that. You know, we make our choices, don't we? This one says, well, these jabs to the stomach is not working midsection. Midsection. Well, these jabs to the stomach is not working midsection. That's not working the body. Okay, some expert here. Everybody's a fucking trainer. 
Um, let's see. Let's read this one. Let's read this one here. This one says, this is one of the biggest problems with our... Aha, uh -huh, I read this one. I think I've read this one. This is one of the biggest problems with our black fighters' pride. If we stuck together and put pride aside, our fighters would be unstoppable. Other races get together and learn from one another, even learn from us at all time. Pride should only be an issue when it comes to winning. I'm not saying I think everyone should help everyone because it's a single man competition, but it should be at least an open door. To, I don't listen. That's too preachy. It's too preachy and it's unrealistic. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's too preachy. And it's way too unrealistic for me. Uh, I'm gonna jump some of this stuff here, and uh, let's see, let's see, let's let's see, let's, 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 let's see, jump some of the stuff here. Let's look at this, this some of the stuff here. It says like, if you want to train Wilder, then hit him up, not sneak diss him. I don't think he wants to train Wilder. I think he's defended. Listen, here's the thing. This is something I want to touch upon. Okay, let's go back to what Floyd wrote. Here's what Floyd wrote. Please hit the follow button if you want to follow a humble student, teacher, mentor, and coach in the sport of boxing. He has all the credentials and qualifications to support why I recognize him as an elite, as an elite boxing coach, something that nowadays many unqualified people claim to be. Okay? Now, Floyd has criticized Virgil Hunter, saying that Virgil Hunter isn't a great trainer. He's very much into his boxing, by the way, and the right way to do things. All right, and I think, in all honesty, he's very critical of the way that Deontay Wilder went around getting rid of Mark Brilliant and replacing him with Mark, sorry, with with Malik Scott. I think it's an absolute and total disgrace, and the fact that people supported it is a sign of the times of how weak people really are, mentally, intellectually, and in terms of integrity. Okay, that's my thing. I don't think that. Mark Brilliant is a great trainer. I disagree with him wholeheartedly when he says elite boxing coach. I think that he should have done the right thing and he should have quit. If Deontay Wilder wasn't listening to him, he should have done the right thing and he should have quit. Or at least tried to quit and if they'd stopped him, at least have that as some ammunition to fire back. And then when he gets kicked out, he sort of takes this sort of milk toast weak approach to sort of challenging what was put out there in terms of Deontay Wilder accusing him of poisoning him and stuff like that. And you've got to understand what Deontay Wilder was doing. Deontay Wilder is a very nasty piece of work. Let's watch a video of Deontay Wilder just to emphasize what I'm trying to say here. Let's watch a video of him. So this is Deontay Wilder aware of the cameras, okay, after the face-off, claiming that he could see guilt in Tyson Fury's eyes. He knows the camera's there. He knew exactly what he was doing. This is the way he works, propaganda-wise. Deontay Wilder is a propagandist of... Uh, you know, he, he was... He was just, he's just a very toxic person. Listen. I'll show you how good, great I am. Come on, man. That's what Deontay Wilder was putting out there. Now, I say that because I want to make a reference to something Deontay Wilder was doing. He was, something he was doing, something he was aware of doing, and he was doing deliberately. When he spoke about Malik, sorry, Mark Brilliant, he stopped using Mark Brilliant's name. And he would talk about a disloyal member of his team, a weak member of his team. And then he did something that I found rather pertinent and very, very evil. He said that a person that I had around my children, playing with my children. Do you know what kind of image that conjures up? That conjures up of the, the image of the most disloyal, disingenuous, evil person. A person that you have, that you bring in out of the goodness of your heart, plays with your children, yet is plotting your downfall. It's something we've seen before, something we've heard before 
It's stuff of soap operas and so on and shit like that. He did it deliberately. He knew what he was doing because he kept on repeating. I kept on hearing him saying, somebody who played with my children, somebody I had around my children. That's how much he was willing to destroy Mark Breland. It wasn't just he poisoned me. He was a weak person. This weak person first poisoned you, then was so weak that he pulled you out of a fight so you wouldn't get hurt. But he's so evil and wanted to do you so much harm that you made the mistake that out of the goodness of your heart, you let him be around your children. And obviously, he's envious of you. That's more or less the, the you know, when Mark Brillen finally said something, he made it about like, oh yeah, I don't, I really don't understand what's going on. I mean, Deontay Wilder, <laughs> Deontay Wilder, I will never respect Deontay Wilder. I can't. But anyway, it is what it is. Let's keep it real. The images that you're going to see, I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to show you some stuff. The images that are going to live on in regards to the underwater, something akin to this. Now, this was put up by BT Sport, as you can see. And they've got the image. They've, got, they've done a, a collage of images from the fights between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. And not once do you see Deontay Wilder have any, any success because they are going to frame the narrative. And this is what Deontay Wilder has helped contribute. There's no knockdown of Tyson Fury here. You know the, the famous knockdown when he's out on the ground and stuff. Every picture gives you the indication of Tyson Fury absolutely dominating Deontay Wilder in the fight. Not just the one fight, but both fights. Because you know this is from the first fight, if you see there. So you see the images there. And this is from the second fight. And I believe this is from the third fight. All right? This is from the second fight. You see the shorts are different from there. You know, the second fight. Uh, first and second fight and the third fight. And not once do you actually see them in any of these images give Deontay Wilder a fair shake. Okay? You've got more, more pressing issues than wondering about what Floyd Mayweather says and trying to cannibalize black people because they do not agree with what Deontay Wilder decided to do to Mark Breland. There's a bigger fucking subject that you need to tackle. And this is what I said, that you, they more or less helped create a white boxing god. Because how come the person who put all these images together, and I know it's BT Britain, but at least you could be fair, a little bit fair. BT Sports, British Telecom Sports. You could put some images of Deontay Wilder having some success against, the, against Tyson Fury, but they make it seem like it's a one-sided, absolute one-sided beatdown. This is what you probably need to fucking address, really. Alongside this image here, which is going to endure forever. This image here is going to endure forever. This is more or less going to represent Deontay Wilder. You know what's really strange? Is that, you know there's an image of a black face? You know what I'm saying? From the old racist times. All right, that you can see that looks similar to this. I forgot what it's called. The uh, you know, with the with the with the big lips and the kind of face fussed together like this. If you painted this face total black, all right, totally black, and um, I think I can't remember what image it is. There's something like this from the time from the from the uh, Jim Crow times that they used and people used to highlight the level of racism that exists back then. And this image, this, this face that Deontay Wilder makes after he's been punched by Tyson Fury sort of takes you back there, if you can sort of connect the two. But anyway, thank you for listening. That's the way I see it anyway. It is what it is. It's not going to be to everybody's satisfaction. I understand that a lot of LDBC Deontay Wilder fanboys, fans are hating right now. Um, I got nothing for you, man. Can't help you. You're going you're gonna to need to get over it eventually. It is what it is. So, uh, yeah, uh, probably I should just leave you one more image, one more image, and that's about it. This is the image that I kept aside to sort of highlight from an artistic perspective what's going on. If you uh, feel that way about Floyd, then let me indulge you with this one here. 
and this is the image I want to show you here what it represents so this is Floyd you know when he was at that uh, video I just showed you earlier in this video that that sort of museum builder built something he says that everybody needs to visit it there this liquid metal thing that's solidified on the ground and when you think about it when you place it on top of the underwater looking like a dead animal and Floyd looking down like that it's almost like he shits on a dead animal it's almost like he's shitting on Deontay Wilder. You know what I mean? When you place it this way here, and you look at it from this perspective, from this perspective, it's like Floyd is just shitting, just taking a big shit, a big liquid shit on Deontay, the bronze bomber Wilder. It is what it is. So I'll leave you with that. I'm, I'm sure it's not to your satisfaction if you're a Wilder fanboy. But that's just the way it is, man. I was going to actually show you something else. Let me see whether I can actually go there. Because this video might go on longer than I thought. Because, you know, I really do need to sort of... Uh... I'm going to show you something else. The reason why I felt that Malik was not right for Floyd. Sorry, for Deontay. Let me see. One second. So we got two videos here. One second. Okay, so like I was saying, forgive me. I got two videos lined up here okay uh one from november the second of november 2018 and the other one from i think it's february 2020 that's two years apart okay malik scott's in both malik scott imitates tyson fury for the underwater in camp sneak peek of how fight could go are you serious sneak peek. first of all first of all it was the most redundant performative load of nonsense i've ever seen and this is when I knew that Malik Scott was no good for Deontay Wilder because the fact that he indulged in this nonsense here. Let's have a look. Look, he was bouncing around. You know what I mean? It, it served no purpose whatsoever. They hardly went against each other. He hardly, if it wasn't going to bring attrition and used to bring attrition, what was the point? What, what was the point of all this? What, what was the point of all this? This is like in 2018, right? And I was looking at Malik Scott thinking, you are the most, this is the most, this is the dumbest, most dumb shit I've ever seen in my life. What was, look at Deontay, what's Deontay doing? Is Deontay closing the space? Is Deontay cutting off the ring? Is Deontay throwing? He's not even using speed. Is Deontay... Using the tactic to get the right hand, to let the right hand off? No. Basically, just watching the guy dance around. Look, 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 look at this shit. Look at this dumb shit. That was, listen, that was from 2018, right? But let's go to the other one. Let's go to the other one. So here we are, 2020. This was via the Boxing Voice. And Deontay Wilder's sparring partner, Malik Scott, does impression of Tyson Fury. Better than Fury. <laughs> You see how much they were fucking brown notes in this guy? Let's move it forward. Let's move it forward a little bit. Look, look, look at Malik Scott. What was the purpose of all this? this I still ask, what was this the purpose of it? Beautiful. Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah, Did he close the space? They were mild. Oh, it didn't make, it didn't make sense. But they waste everybody's time. This is the kind of stuff they were putting out about Deontay Wilder and Malik Scott that just made me feel this is the dumbest shit ever. And is he even moving? Is he even moving like Tyson Fury back then? I mean, they didn't know that Tyson Fury was going to come in and fucking bulldoze the motherfucker <laughs> in the second fight anyway. Look, 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 look at Deontay. Look at Deontay. That's a homo shit, you know, when he's with, when he's with uh, Malik Scott. Look. Which one? Look, he's going to do shaky, shaky. Look, 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 look. God damn. Anyway, it is what it is. And this is the guy he later made his head train. A guy indulges this kind of nonsense. In the corner, you know what he was saying to Deontay? God has blessed you with something that can get this fight finished. If you contrast that to the video that was released of Havon, Javon, or Yavon Sugar Hill going at Tyson Fury telling him to throw the jab. God damn it, it's the easiest having a go at him, hardcore go at him. You know that Malik Scott should fucking leave that camp immediately. Actually, both of them should just retire. Let's keep it real. 
Let's keep it real. They should just both, both of them should just retire. Oh, Malik Scott can actually get better as a trainer, but if he stays around this dude here, he won't. Look, what what is this nonsense here? What was the point? Did this help at all? Anyway, it is what it is. Two.